G'day, welcome to the Intact Beyond Transformation Series. I'm Nathan Dale, CEO of Intact Beyond. Thanks very much for joining us. We're a collective of subject matter experts who've all come together to help communities get through this challenging time and thrive beyond. Our facilitator today is Nicole Watson, and our expert is Ronan from Cred. Ronan's gonna to talk to us about how we can support our, our staff during this challenging time, as well as small steps and routines that we can set up to help manage our time. Uh, he's also going to look at how we can use this time uh, as a moment of reflection, as well as how we can actually define what our purpose is and find greater purpose in what we're doing. I'm gonna throw over to the guys now, and thanks very much again for joining us. Hi. I'm Nicole Watson, and I'll be facilitating today's deep dive with Ronan McDonough from CRED. Hi, Ronan. How are you today? Very well, Nicole. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much for asking. Freezing, as we've just mentioned, but, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> I think us expats are trying to get used to the weather here. We've been a bit spoiled and acclimatised to the Australian climate. Definitely. We're feeling a bit homesick at the moment, so it's giving us a little bit of a taste of home, I think. It is. <laughs> well, look, thank you so much, um, you know, for taking your time um, to share your expertise with, um, with everybody today. We, we really appreciate it. Um, I want to start by just opening up. I mean, look, most people are working from home at the moment, um, you know, in, in isolation. I just wanted to understand how this has affected you and your business. So I've been pretty fortunate. I've been able to work from home for the last couple of years um, and deliver some of my work um, online and I do a lot of coaching, leadership development work and facilitation online. So I've been used to this, I've been fortunate. I guess now that I have my wife working from home and three young kids, I now have four extra people in my office every day. So that's brought its own challenges as, as someone trying to run a company, as, as a partner and a husband, and also as a parent. And we have, Good days and bad days, Nicole. Um, very honestly, some days it seems to work and some days it, it just doesn't work and we fail miserably. And you know, what I try and practice with myself and my work with my clients is just taking it day by day and being pretty kind to ourselves. There's no one could have predicted this time. We're all trying to navigate this time. There's no playbook. So day by day is the approach I'm taking it by. I really like, um, you know, that point about being kind to ourselves. I think, you know, we sometimes we are our, our own worst enemy. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves for things to be perfect and things to run smoothly. And at the moment, things aren't running smoothly. You know, that it, it, it's not um, the norm. Um, and, and, you know, we, we do have distractions at home. We, we don't have the facilities, the infrastructure, the equipment that we do in the office. And, you know, I mean, I've been on, on Zooms and, and recordings and we've had, you know, children running in the background and, and dogs barking. And I've had to kick my partner out on, to work on the balcony one day because, you know, he was too loud when I'm trying to record. And I think, you know, we're, we're all just trying to find our way um, in this current time. And I think we all just need to, um, you know, as you said, be a little bit kinder to ourselves and realise that um, we don't need to put ourselves under this much pressure at the moment. Yeah, I think a bit of self-compassion is, is really important. And I think, you know, what I've seen in even through my own facilitation and face-to-face -face work in the last number of years, I try and encourage leaders to be themselves. And, it, and I think this time is actually allowing us to be ourselves. We can kind of take off the, the mask that we often have, uh, we have on and try and project something or portray something that we're not. So I'm really enjoying and embracing the, the ability to be perfectly imperfect. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds great. And I think, you know, even down to, you know, at, when you're working in a team or you're leading a team as well, I think, you know, have, not having that expectation that everyone will be, you know, available at X, Y or Z time. Because as you said, you know, you've got kids in the house, you, know, you, all, you need to schedule with your partner. So therefore, you know, we need to have that level of flexibility. And I think just showing that human element um, it's going to strengthen so many relationships, both internally and externally. And I mean, I know that I've noticed that just from, um, you know, being intact and, and dealing with, um, you know, clients externally. It's definitely um, these types of times they do really build relationships because we're all sharing and going through similar um, circumstances, similar issues um, and through a similar journey. 
It's, it's interesting you say that, uh, Nicole. We've tried to embrace a couple of sayings in our, in our business. So we're in, we're in the business of helping people manage their well-being, manage their levels of stress and anxiety. And it would be remiss of me if I created stress for the people that are working with me and supporting us at this time. So we've embraced the saying, no stress. But we, are you putting on your own oxygen mask first? So we give each other permission to, to share what's really going on. And the second element we talk about is um, no Irish guilt. So <laughs> we all have, we all kind of carry levels of guilt. So if you can't get something done, um, just, just say it. And um, if people are spending time in a guilt space, uh, it's not for really supporting them. And they've got, we've all got multiple roles to fulfill, whether it be partner, parent, and just, and even self-care as well. So I think yeah, it's a time to be kind to ourselves. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for sharing. So Ronan, would you like to tell us a little bit about CRED and what it is that you'll be focusing on today, please? So very briefly, um, I'm the founder of CRED and we work at the intersections of education and technology. And we help people live with purpose every day. And specifically, we help people build sustainable habits around the areas of the habit of learning. So building an awareness of the neuroscience, what happens in our brain, and how do we learn how to learn? We help people build sustainable habits around mental health and well-being, And we help people that around giving and doing in the service of others to create social impact for our community and our planet. And our purpose at CRED is to enable collective actions today to impact tomorrow's world. And I couldn't think of a better time where this purpose is more relevant. I think many of us have seen and become more aware of what's really important to us in our lives. I think many of us are using this time of the great pause or the great reset or the great realization as that video has been sharing in the last couple of days around wanting a simpler life. So what's really important in terms of our values are our health, our families, do we have enough food? Do we have a roof over our heads, our community and a planet? And outside of that, I think a lot of stuff is just kind of noise. And um, so we are, we want to work with people and support them to create the world that they want to see and retain the key elements from this time. And our vision, uh, Nicole, is to, to create, enable 33 billion actions by 2030 to support the United Nations global goals for sustainable development while helping people see their own impact and legacy. And today, what I'd like to talk about is what we're doing at this time. And I want to share it with your community to help them hopefully support the people that they support or lead and manage, but also to help people navigate this time on an individual level. So we're running a couple of initiatives. One of them is the CRED 15. It's a daily live webinar twice a day where we help people navigate this time, start their day with focus and structure and mindfully start it and combine some key elements. So we've run 62 of those live webinars and which we are gifting to our community. I'll also be talking about some 30 day challenges which we are launching and we launched a 30 day mental health and wellbeing challenge on Friday. I want to share uh, some of the work we're doing uh, with some of our early adopter innovator clients in the university space and 30 day challenges around social impact and leadership. So my intention is to share what we're seeing to support your community. So great, thank you. So, so Nicole, um, so why are we doing this and why are we gifting our time? Um, I mentioned around the United Nations Global Goals for Sustainable Development. For those people who don't know, in 2015, the United Nations came up with 17 global goals, which they said that governments alone can't achieve key outcomes that we need to support the planet by 2030. So we need governments 
and civic society and individuals working together to achieve those goals. I personally love it as it's a framework to help us relate our work back to in terms of purpose and meaning. We feel very passionately as an organization around Global Goal 3, which is good health and well-being. And as an organization, we've also taken Pledge 1% commitment. So for those people in your community who don't know about Pledge 1%, it was a movement started by organizations such as Salesforce and Atlassian and other uh, role models to support organizations to incorporate giving into the DNA of their business. And organizations have choices around gifting 1% of their time, their product, their services, their revenue, and potentially equity to support community and social impact. I noticed on um, an earlier slide that you had a note that said there is no planet B. Yeah. And I think that's, um, that's a really key point. I mean, at the moment where we have been resetting, it's a great opportunity to reassess our personal goals and our personal aspirations and what our values are and how we want to contribute to, to that bigger picture. And I think there's absolutely no time um, like the present to do that. So I can't wait to hear what else you've got to say. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I was first introduced to the Global Goals about two years ago myself through our business community. And they really resonated with me. And like any tech person, we love a framework. So it gives, some, it gives an anchor point for, for businesses and organizations. And as you said, we have an opportunity now to create the world we want to see. And I think I've got, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be the father of three young children. And I think we have a responsibility to leave the planet in a better place for our, our kids and our generations to come. Definitely. So stepping into the CRED 15, so as mentioned, it is a 15 minute daily webinar at 8.15 and 5.15 every day, Sydney time. Um, and we help people to navigate this time. And we deliberately use the word navigate this time because people are navigating this at very different ways. People are experiencing this time very differently based on their personal circumstances. So we want to create a space where for just 15 minutes every day, people can start the day very mindfully. We support people to, to navigate their emotions, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. We want to ensure people feel connected. I know there's a bit of a misnomer around social distancing when it's actually physical distancing because we need social connection and our brains crave social connection. And if appropriate for people, we want to support people to build strong habits because it's not always appropriate for people to use this time to learn and to grow. Some people are merely surviving. Some people are using the time to learn and thrive, but we want to support people in different ways. So very briefly, Nicole, it consists of we support people to check in on their energy levels. The start is a very brief scan where we get people to notice their energy levels and also how they're feeling. Many of us are experiencing a myriad and a roller coaster of emotions at this time. And a bit of a generalization, us males are not very good at the emotional labeling perspective or sense. So my co-facilitator, Kendra and I have a goal to support people to navigate this time but to also build their emotional literacy. So by using this time to understand what people are feeling and very deliberately using the language around, I notice I am feeling, it helps people separate from the feeling or the emotion. And for many of my clients, I support them to say, think of this as data, okay? We might say we don't do feelings in our organization. We, we don't do emotions here. Well, you are giving off data and there is data around. So if you can tap in and check in with your own sets of data and you can support people to do the same, you are likely to help people navigate this time. Then very briefly, we have three pillars in our CRED um, 15 framework, focus, move and connect. And in the area of focus, we support people to choose their focus every day. So one of the challenges that's happening in our brains at the moment is there's so many levels of threat happening and are compounded through a loss of certainty, 
autonomy and relatedness. So we help people start their day with focus and deliberately choose it. We encourage people to be physically active for at least 15 minutes every day. So to make sure they're encouraging, incorporating physical movement into their day and embracing creativity, whether it's be the body coach, Joe Wicks or online yoga or finding unique and novel ways to be physically active, which will fuel their mental health and well-being. And a pillar of connect, we encourage and we encourage people to socially connect when they can't physically connect. So to reach out and check in with someone just to see how they're going, because we can't underestimate the impact that that checking in will have in someone's day. So Nicole, some of the kind of key learnings we've seen from the Cred 15, as I said, we've, we've run 62 live webinars from the, since the 27th of March. And we're seeing that people are navigating this time very, very differently. So if you're a leader or if you're managing people or you're managing teams, try and understand that maybe how you're experiencing it might be very different to how others are experiencing it. And by just asking the question and checking in to understand how you can support your people, you will actually support your people. People have different needs around connection. So I know there's a lot of talk around Zoom fatigue and the extroverts are loving the day and, and, how do, and the introverts are, have been waiting for social distancing and for this time for years. And so we're seeing that people have different needs for, for connection. So we run our, our live webinars through Zoom. We also broadcast them live on Facebook. And what we're seeing is that people engage in very different ways. Some people join in and be part of it and they interact through the chat. Other people are on the webinar, but they just want to feel connected. They don't want to participate. And other people will engage just through Facebook Live and they will do it at their own time. So my tip and my, my learning to your community is that people have different needs for connection. So if you're a leader, you may assume that everybody just wants to be connected the whole time and we're scheduling the coffee, the morning tea, the lunch, the afternoon tea, the quiz, the drinks, and that may be you know, overwhelming for people. So co-create these types of connection sessions with your teams on an individual basis and don't assume that the way you like to connect is the way everyone else does. I guess it's a, um, it's a really good time as well to kind of reset and, and really get to know your team. I mean, if you don't, you might have new people in your team or, or you know, potentially we're all going through, um, you know, different um, situations, um, all, although we're going through the same situation. So I think it could be a really good um, opportunity to really understand the individuals in your team and what works well for them. Because, I mean, this stems across everything, right? It stems across, um, you know, management, leadership, learning, um, you know, absolutely everything. We are all very different. Um, so I, I, I definitely feel that that's, um, that's some great advice. I mean, would you suggest then um, potentially having different forms, um, you know, of connection and, and different processes for, for different people? Yeah, I, I, I think, I know it's, we're, we're constrained by time as well. So just, I think we, we had a webinar this morning, we were asked like, what makes a quality engagement? And our response to that was something where everybody um, feels engaged and can participate in, um, but they also have a say in the creation of it because you know, we, we, we do need people to be involved um, and, 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 and commit to supporting the teams as well. So it's, it can be very hard for a leader to have to organize lots of different uh, scenarios and situations, but then that becomes overwhelming for the, for the leader as well. So I would suggest with your team saying, my intention is to support you at this time. Mm -hmm. How can I best do that? And how can we give feedback to each other about what's working and what's not working? Um, and, but how do we really make sure that we are, we are navigating this time together? And if something's not working, please feel free to share back and give us feedback. So setting intention, but making the time and role modeling around being open to feedback as well. So what I think that evaluation piece is really key because, you know, we, it is just uncharted territory. So what we think may work 
may not be working. So I think to have that open line of communication and saying, you know, how do you feel this is working? Is this working well for you? What can we be doing differently? What suggestions do you have? It also gives that individual that sense of connectivity. It drives their engagement because they've got the buy-in because they are co-collaborating or co-creating that strategy. Um, and they're also, they'll be bought in, so they'll, they'll, they'll full on drive um, that initiative as well. Absolutely, because they've got, they got psychological ownership of it, 100%. Mm -hmm. and, and just to build on that, Nicole, I think, you know, going back to the theme of self-compassion, when you as a leader or a manager, when your stress levels are high, your anxiety levels are, are, are high, your capacity to see these things um, may be very low. So be kind to yourself as a leader as well, I, I would suggest, uh, because it's, as you say, there is no playbook. It's, um, I'm not going to, I will say, this is the only time I'm going to say the word unprecedented. I won't say it anymore after that, but it is, nobody has been able to prepare for this. So I think having those open conversations, there's a beautiful nexus, Nicole, happening around growth mindset, lean startup, agile software development, and it's all around that rapid iteration and, and feedback and learning. And I think if we can embrace that into this time, we're more likely to get better outcomes. And the final element that we're seeing, Nicole, at this time is that people want support to transition to a new way of being. You know, we, we talked about the, the great reset, the great lesson, the great realization. And I think people are wanting to not slip back into old habits. And um, so I think there's going to be some, if organizations that can support their people to have that balance of less commute time, more integrated family time, um, a more realistic expectation because we have proven that this can exist. And um, so I, I think people are having these moments of realization and I think they will, they're going to be faced with some choices. And I think there will be regret if we slip back into the old way of pace and doing. So my tip to your 3% of leaders who want to be innovative um, is to support your people to have these conversations and not just assume that everything is going to go back because it's not going to go back. Well, it's like being, you know, shown, um, you know, so if you go somewhere on holiday and you go to the same old place and, you know, it's great and you're really happy with it, but then you get shown a different location and then you, you get that opportunity, you know, do you want to go back to, to that old way? You might really like some parts of that and you, you probably want to merge them or, or flip between. And I think, we will have that amalgamation and that combination of, um, of, of home um, and office. So I hope that, you know, with all the learns, and, and there are a lot of learns in this current time, that we don't ignore those and go back to the old, but we actually say, what do we want to keep? Um, you know, which learns do we want to keep? You know, what, what tasks do we want to continue on with? And, you know, do we want to continue to have um, you know, some time for, for ourselves? Do we want to continue to think about our health? do we go back to that pace? So I'm, I'm really hoping that there'll be a bit of a combination. So, um, but only time will tell. Yes, yeah, and I think, um, so we've got the great realization at the moment. I think the great choice is what's gonna follow next. And hopefully, hopefully we can stay true to ourselves and our, our commitments and you know, our what if statement is, what if we could hold on to the things that we re realize are dear to us and embrace both. It wasn't all bad, but this time is is definitely a time for reflection. Yeah, hundred percent. What if we could learn from this time and and, and come out stronger? I think that's a, a really key. I mean, I think when we started looking at this project, there were you know a hundred what ifs that we could think about, but that's what really got us excited about this initiative, and particularly with a, a lot of the experts that I have been talking about, it is that opportunity to really shape and change the, the future. Um, and I think that's why we've, we've managed to get so many, um, you know, fantastic people like yourself on board. Well, I'm delighted to be part of it because I believe in what you're trying to do as well. And the fact that you've been able to bring so many great people together, I think is a testament to the work you're doing. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, so continuing on around, so we are doing 30 day mental health and wellbeing challenges. And we just launched one on 
Friday. And so this was in response to feedback we got from our community. We asked our Cred15 community, what is it you are needing at this time? And some of our community said they wanted to do a deep dive, learn more, and actually build some of the foundations around mental health and well-being to support them uh, to move forward in the coming days, weeks, and months and, and years ahead. So very briefly, it's a 30-minute um, weekly webinar where we do a deep dive. We're supporting people to create a personal well-being canvas, which I'll share more about in a moment. And we're also gifting our CRED mobile app to help people build habits during this time. So, um, so the, how the challenge works is it's, there's a deep dive for 30 minutes over five weeks. There's an option for people to join the CRED 15 and, and check in just to keep them accountable and supported and connected. And the, the commitment to the mobile app is about five to 10 minutes a day. And so what is a canvas? So for people in your community who don't know what a canvas is, many years ago, we used to write business plans that were 50, 60 pages long and no one ever read them. The uh, focus in the startup space is around building a business model canvas or a lean canvas to, to allow you to model your business on one page essentially and, and change it dynamically as you understand your customer segments, the problem you're solving and how you're going to actually grow your business. So what we've done is a credit, we've built a modified personal wellbeing canvas. So it's, it's an element of helping people build the foundations around wellbeing. And what we do in our 30 day challenge is we, we're going to support people to build these elements over the course of five weeks such that they create something and they've got some foundations in place. And so we started with on Friday, helping people understand what they're doing well. So an acknowledgement piece, because too often they're going to be overwhelming. Or well, here's a list of things I'm not doing again. Here's another set of habits or tools or techniques I don't have. So we started with acknowledgement and then helping people understand what does success look like for you in 30 days? What's the habit you want to create? Um, and then get people thinking about what does success look like in life going forward? Because I think this element or time of reset as well is helping people evaluate what does success really look like in life? And actually, I'm not, I'm not willing to take someone else's definition of success in life. It's not. And I think people are questioning, is it around the house, the private schools? the three holidays a year. Is that like what success looks like? So helping people define what individual success looks like for them. Yeah. And I think it's really different for each individual as well, isn't it? I mean, some people value time more than money. Um, some people value money more than time. So um, I think that's really key to actually, as you said, work out what success means for you because until you know what that end goal is and what it is that you want to achieve, you know, with the best business coach and the best, you know, plan in the world, you, you, you don't have an end goal. So you, you're planning to, for nothing. So true. So, and there's a lot of research, Nicole, that's saying, you know, around why New Year's resolutions and goals don't usually land or because a lot of people haven't set goals knowing what their success criteria is or what their values are or what they stand for or what they want to be known for, or the difference they want to create in the world, so they're, they're not aligned. So we're helping people just start the thinking process if it's appropriate for them. And we always say these sessions are a great place to start. The intention is never to finish. And then we want to get- the why, it's all about the why, isn't it? I don't know how many times a day I talk about the why. I'm pretty sure that everyone's sick of me going on about it, but if you don't understand the why, you don't know why you're doing anything. So and you, and you won't do it because you won't have that motivation. 100%. And when the times get tough, you're probably more likely to, to give up. Whereas if you have a strong why, it'll overcome many fears and uncertainties. So then Nicole, what we try and do is we support people to build implementation intention, start getting thinking around, okay, if I find myself slipping back into the overscheduled meetings, I will do why. So getting people to think around this and build this into their, I guess, their consciousness over 30 days. So the intention is that people will populate this canvas 
And these canvases are available on our website. Download them on our uh, CRED website. There's a PDF version. There's an editable Word document as well, which we're gifting to the community. And so we got some ideas to support people with their mental health and well-being. Again, I'm not going to step through all of these, but we want people to maintain a scan of areas of health and well-being. Again, to help people understand, you know, what am I doing well? But maybe where is one area that I might, one or two areas I might want to make a difference in 30 days. And so our key early insights, and I say early because we launched this last Friday, was providing options for people. And I think you asked this question earlier on, Nicole. So it's about time. So we provide multiple time slots for people to do the same content. And some people want self-directed learning. So they're saying, give me the framework. I understand what the criteria for the 30-day challenge is. Yeah, I've got the resource on the website. Give me a guide. I want to go, I want to do it at my own pace. The second element, Nicole, we're seeing is around the need to space learning. People are overwhelmed, stressed, anxious. And we also know from neuroscience how we design learning. So chunking things down and creating them into bite-sized learning, doing, reflection, exercises is going to support long-term learning. And we're also seeing the move towards people wanting that sense of purpose. So the fact that when we aligned our CRED 30-day challenge with the United Nations Global Goals, aligned it with United Nations Global Goals 3, people are seeing I'm doing something for myself, but I'm also doing something to support others. So if I put on my own oxygen mask first and look after my mental health and well-being, I have a positive impact on myself, my loved ones and the people around me, and I'm generally going to show up better in my interactions with the people I work with. But also I'm doing in a service of others and I'm part of a community they're doing around combined actions towards the global goals. So definite sense of that shift of, of, of purpose-led people and organizations. Fantastic. So um, I've got a question for you, Raynan. Why, why 30 days? Why, why that number? I mean, obviously it's, it's you know, on a, on a monthly basis, but what was the, um, the thought process behind 30 days? So you know, I've been to many conferences over the years and I've heard many speakers, coaches, trainers talk about authority around, it takes 21 days to build a habit. It takes 15 days to build a habit. It takes 30 days to build a habit. It takes 50 days to build a habit. So I, Based on experience, I would say the point you made earlier on around learning and habit forming is probably pretty personal, okay? We, there's there many factors that influence it, but we've chosen 30 day because it's, it's stretch and it's, it's enough, um, it's a stretch target, but it's, it's enough to help people um, bring attention to their daily commitments and actions in terms of quantity and quality. Uh, so it's, it's enough time to do it, but to also kind of create that reflection and feel that you have created a habit. So I think there's probably some empirical evidence that says 50 to 55 days. Um, I think you have a degree of difficulty getting people to sign up for a 50 day or 30 day challenge. So I think having those kind of monthly and 30 days is a nice sprint time. Yeah, no, and I think it's, um, I think it's a great opportunity, you know, to be able to, to look back on the past month and then really assess it, you know, how do I feel now? How did I feel last month? And, you know, I mean, something that I'm personally trying to do is, is keep a bit of a diary about, you know, how I am feeling during this time so that I can just be aware. Because I think quite often, you know, when you're entrenched in work, you're then traveling to and from work, you know, you're trying to get to the gym, you're rushing home to cook your dinner and to see your friends or spend time with your family. When do we have that opportunity to sit there and, and self-reflect and, and think about, you know, how we feel and how we're feeling and what as, a, as, as humans um, and individuals we actually need to continue and, and not to break down? Because, you know, we're, we're humans, we're, we're not machines. And I feel that at the moment, and particularly in, in the last few years, businesses and individuals have been more aware of mental health and um, more confident in talking about um, their individual mental health needs and, and what this means from, you know, from, for a community. So um, with that in mind, given in the current situation, 
I think it, it's really getting people to look internally and saying, this is a massive change to, to not just my life, but, you know, a global change. What does that mean? Was I happy before? Um, you know, was I stressed before? What did I need? What wasn't I getting? And, and how can I make that change when everything else is changing? There's no time like the present to really, you know, take hold of, you know, our, our own future and our own mental health and say, right, okay, well, let's look at it for the next 30 days. Let's look at it for the next six months. You know, what am I going to do? Let's reset, let's evaluate, and then let's make a plan. So I think um, that's, that's the key thing at the moment. It, it's, great to, it's great to reset, it's great to evaluate, and it's great to analyze what it is that we're doing. But if we sit on that uh, and we don't do anything with it, and that's what I think is so fantastic about you know, your initiatives and, and, and cred generally is, is you know, it is tangible. It is measurable. And as you said, it is um, bite-sized as well. Yeah, thank you. For, thank you for that acknowledgement. And uh, like, like any company, like we started off with a vision and you know, we've learned along the way. Like we're going five years and we had an initial vision, but it's changed and morphed. And I think we've, we've had to stay true to what we believe in. Um, and it's, it's interesting you say that about reflection there's one thing in my conversations I had over the last number of years, Nicole, was with people saying, I'm too busy to slow down and, and reflect. Um, or your technology, the transaction cost to record my insights or slow down, it takes too long. I've got, a, I've got a Garmin or a Fitbit that records my steps and my sleep and it tells me what I've done and I have to slow down and reflect. And you can take that kind of, okay, personally, you go, what, how do we improve the technology? But I'm, I'm yet to come across any way of helping people like capture what's in their head or what you're thinking or feeling and, and link it to, and to be able to journal and see some trends and patterns without slowing down and doing it. So yes, your garment may capture um, your heart rate or your sleep, but that's a reaction to something that might be happening in your body. So you're seeing data without the underlying cause. And what we're trying to get people to do is support them to slow down, reflect, see some pattern and trend, be very intentional about how you start your day, how you finish your day, and what you're learning. And it's not having the tools. I, I'm, I've got access to every coaching tool, mindfulness tool, app, etc. cetera. I still am stressed. I'm still anxious. Unfortunately, I'm not the best parent and I still like shout at my kids. Like, so having tools or information uh, is not enough. Actually practicing. And the final thing I'll say on that, Nicole, is that I think we have unrealistic expectations about habit forming or building new techniques and tools to support us. I think a lot of times we think will alone can get us to an to do something. So we'd never set an expectation around, I wanna train, I wanna run a marathon on Monday morning, and I speak to my personal trainer, I've done no training, but I expect to do a marathon with no training. I wanna have a million dollars in the bank by Wednesday, but I've got no savings. But I think we often have this assumption that just by willing behavior change that it happens. And unfortunately, like there's no secret sauce, it's just, doing the small things on a daily basis to build a habit. So the first part of what we talked about, Nicole, has been around really supporting people with what they're needing at this time. So it's a combination of helping people navigate this time, providing a sense of connection. And the next two things I want to talk about, Nicole, are how are we helping people to create like toward or engaged challenges? Um, around a sense of purpose or being. So the first thing I want to talk about is, um, sorry, this is the final thing, sorry. We, so we, part of the challenge, we're saying to people, what, if you all work together, if we all work together, what could we achieve in terms of our actions and in, in impacts in 30 days? So I think that sense of a challenge is very appealing to people. And I'll talk more about that in the two challenges we've run. So, end of last year we ran a, a 30 day social impact challenge in conjunction with the university of new south wales graduate student association so very briefly it was we had a launch event where we introduced the global goals 
to the number of students. And in a glance, it was 25 participants, 15 different nationalities. People worked on 11 of the 17 United Nations Global Goals, and we helped them choose what they were passionate about. So we incredibly proud of this slide. We had 15 different nationalities brought together in this challenge. And it really showed that when people come together, it crosses borders. So trying to do something that impacts our community or the planners is cross country. And it's across religion. We had one person say to me on one of the challenge events, I'm from Mexico, I'm, I'm Catholic. I've got Shaila up here, it's from India. I've got Katareya from Iran, who's Muslim. And we're all here working together and having conversations for a common goal with no differences. These are the goals that the students worked on for people who are not familiar with them. So we help people create a link between something very high level like good health and well-being, a target, which is target 3.4, or reduce uh, mortality from non-communicable diseases, remote mental health, and then a specific action that people will commit to on a daily basis. Here's an example around gender equality. So we help some people wanted to work on uh, target 5.5, ensure full participation in leadership and decision making. So we encourage people to uh, meet with a female mentor each week and understand some of your biases and ask what you can do as an individual. So the whole thing is helping create that link from high level to action. These were the, most, the three most popular goals our group worked on. So of the 25 people, 13 people chose uh, responsible consumption, and good health and well-being, and climate action. So hopefully this gives your community an indication of what the younger generations are feeling passionately about. And if you're looking to attract, retain, or engage with talent, these are the things that are top of mind for people. So after 30 days, these 25 students, each doing their small daily actions, completed 1,189 actions and impacts together. So when we reveal this slide at the end of the 30-day challenge at our celebration event, the sense of satisfaction and of community and achievement was unreal. And to witness that in the, in the students who thought, well, how, how does my daily action of switching off the light bulb or, or, or reducing my meat consumption make a difference to the climate action and the rainforests in the Amazon? So one of the things we saw was that we showed that your, by, your daily actions can make a difference. So by linking, and this is my own example, I chose to work on Global Goal 12, Responsible Consumption. The target was substantially reduce waste generation. One of my actions was um, to, to reduce my coffee cup usage. So no keep cup, no coffee was my action. And I was able to track using our app that I had saved 42 coffee cups in 30 days. Now, my kids have been saying to me for six months before, Dad, you've got to stop using those coffee cups. They're bad for the environment. They're not recyclable. And I'm like, yeah, but I kind of like it. It's good social. It's, I like the, the social part of it. But until I did it and experienced, so it was an experiential learning, and I did it, I realized the impact of my actions, my choices, my behaviors. On the final day of the challenge, Nicole, I went to my local coffee shop and took a picture of I asked the coffee shop owner to say, can I just take 42 coffee cups and take a picture of my one keep cup? And that was my footprint in a month. And outside of the cost, it was my aha moment going, that's my footprint in a year. 504 coffee cups is what I personally use. I've been drinking coffee for about 10 years. It's 5,000 coffee cups, one person. So, it creates the awareness on, on a small level, but now it, it, it shows what we can do on a, on a wider level. So I would say in 30 days, Nicole, I've successfully built that habit. So that's October, November, December, January, February, March, April, seven months, I've not used a coffee cup. And so it's killing me, this, this um, isolation is killing me now because I can't bring my keep cup to a coffee shop now because they won't. They won't take keep cups at the coffee shop. So I'm, I'm back on instant coffee um, and I, I have bought a coffee machine. But it's, um, it's just an, an insight into some of 
how awareness can create behavior change. So just to confirm, so you haven't gone back to buying the, the coffee because that's, you know, that's, I guess, um, a question that I might have, you know, you, you set a goal, you're on your way, you're tracking it, everything's looking good. And it's like anything. It's like, say, for example, a diet. You're on a diet, you're eating healthy, you're smashing the gym. Then one day you slip. Most people give up at that time. They say, oh, you know, I've given up. I've, you know, this, I've been, um, you know, I, I can't keep it up anymore. Um, I've broken the chain, so I may as well give up. So what advice do you have, you know, for people who may have a hiccup, the situation may change and they still want to achieve that goal, but they've been derailed. So I would say hit the reset button, just go again. Okay. This, like we talk about here. So the reflections, no guilt, moral bash, moral bashing or virtue signaling. Like this, it's just, it's not, it's not a guilt thing. And um, so it's around like, okay. I, I didn't today. What did I learn from that? Was I, did I set an unrealistic expectation? Am I going to be able to go to the gym seven days a week? So, you know, the learning is in the doing and the reflection. So we deliberately use our technology to help people to bring awareness to their behavior change around quantity and quality. So how often do I do it? Yes, the more I do it, the better I'll get at it. But also, I guess, you know, you haven't, um, it's not like all the work that you've put in before has been a waste of time. You know, if you, um, you know, slipped up and you did buy a coffee for that one day, it's not like, you know, all the other cups that you've, you've saved, um, you know, we're going to just fly yeah. back into the ocean again. Exactly. So I think it's also, it's what you've, going back to what you said earlier, being kind to yourself, understanding the progress that you have made and, and you know yes resetting but probably also going back through your progress and and then you know that comes into being able to track it on a macro um, on a micro level and having a look at the little details and I think quite often as well people get um disheartened and you know I, I am no different I'll have a day where you know I'm I'm really really happy and then I'll have a day and I'm like I hate the world, you know, why are people doing this? What is, why can't people just do this? Why? And I get, you know, it's very easy to, to go down, you know, the rat hole and, and get your, your head down there and, and get overwhelmed. But I think yeah, that's when you have to understand how your actions as an individual do contribute to that overall big picture. And that's where you have to have the faith in yourself and take the control and say, well, I'm going to do these things to contribute to this goal. And this is what I can control. And if I can influence anyone else along the way with my journey and my purpose, great. But what I can't control is the billions of other people in the world that might not want to do this, but I'm going to control what I can. It, it, great, great insight. I think that's so true to call. It's, it's funny, like on a personal level, like when, I, when I started this, I did a video on LinkedIn and I was riddled with like imposter syndrome around, oh God, what? why am I doing this? And like, what are people going to think of me? And my kids even say to me, dad, will you stop using a coffee cup example? No one wants to hear that anymore. But I know that when I talk to people about it and you see the picture, it's, it's, it is quite memorable. Um, so I th think it's a combination of what can I control? What can I influence? Not virtue signaling. I'm not trying to tell people that your choices are wrong or different. We've all got different things we feel passionate about. And as you said, a bit of self-compassion and and be kind to yourself because we're all perfectly imperfect and so what, what also we learned in this challenge was you know i noticed that the accountability was really important i needed the accountability so we were on bronte beach one sunday morning and my friends asked me for a did i want a coffee and i, I forgot to bring my keep cup and i said i can't i forgot my keep cup so my friend said well we won't tell anyone <laughs> Who's going to know? And I thought, well, actually, tonight when I'm rating myself on the app, I know I've kind of cheated the group and I'll, I'll be letting down the group. So I think that was a wider sense of accountability, but also purpose that made me kind of stick with it. Um, and I think another time where my father was visiting from Ireland and I had my keep cup, but I, he didn't. So I had to buy a disposable one for him. And my daughter said, it's okay, Dad. You can just rate yourself a four today. Like, you still did your action, um, but you can be a four. So that was great. That gave me the framework to work with it. I didn't give up, um, and I didn't think I was really bad. I did momentarily, um, but I kept going.
So I think we learned through this that change only happens when you're ready. So no amount of telling people they need to change is ever going to make change. So we can all relate to this in our lives around, I might want to lose some weight, I might want to do something, but until I'm ready, change doesn't happen. And the, the final element there, small steps, compounding impact. I think that's a kind of key reflection. And so we, we learned, so hopefully this is insightful for your, your leaders or your managers who are attract, looking to attract, retain and engage talent. People are definitely seeking community. And we know that we had a number of students who came from overseas, no connection, no community. There's huge issues of social isolation and loneliness being one of the number one reasons why people leave college if uh, don't finish first year in college. So having the sense of community and being able to create that in your organizations, really important. Since seeking to work for organizations with purpose. So purpose may be one of those words that was like a, a nice to have or a, yeah, we'll get to that or we'll have it on our wall. We'll have the values on our wall. I think people's BS raters are pretty strong. And if, if you're not incorporating purpose into what you're doing, I think you will struggle to retain, maybe in the short term, you will retain staff. But if you're looking to really create engagement with your staff, I would say incorporate purpose into your DNA of your business. I and agree more. I think the values piece is, is so key. Um, and coming from, you know, that, that HR recruitment change management background, um, the amount of um, individuals that I would speak to and ask them, you know, if they knew what the values were of the business, um, they have no idea. And it's, you know, often, it's as you said, they are words. They might be written on a wall. They might be in your induction paperwork. But are companies living and breathing those values? And that's what connects us, um, you know, in the workplace as a community. Um, people who may not work in the same offices, they might work for the same business, um, but, you know, they can connect through that common goal, through that common purpose and really living um, and breathing those values. Oh, yeah, I, I think the days of the, the values on the walls and just being there for a statement or in a, in a brochure are gone. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And, and the final thing, Nicola, I would add here is that students are looking to be to leaders who are leading with purpose. So we did a lot of research and exit interviews um, with, with our students uh, afterwards. And they said that they want to work for organizations, but they also want to be around leaders who are, they are influencers because they are wanting to choose this career they don't know how, so they want leaders to show them, it's okay, you can have a combination. You can, you can be successful and do good in the world. So if you are a leader who can do that, I think you will create a following. And we're not talking Instagram following, we're talking real following here. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it, it is, it's definitely really key, um, you know, everything that you've mentioned today, I think, um, we have spoken to, um, or I have spoken to companies for years and years and years around employee engagement and the employee value proposition. And if, you know, that is something that people are looking at more and more, but I think during this time, it really is going to be something that is going to rise to, to the top of a business agenda because, you know, you're completely correct. You know, you, you, you don't get that engagement. You do not get that retention. You won't attract those individuals. And yes, um, you know, salary and work-life balance are still the number ones, particularly in Australia, um, you know, drivers and motivators for people joining a business. But what we have noticed in the last eight to 10 years um, is CSR um, and diversity and inclusion are featuring very highly, not in the comparison, no one's ever going to pick a business based on the CSR policy and get paid, you know, you know, 10k a year or something. But, you know, what they will do is they will assess those values and choose whether or not they want to work for that organisation. Um, personally, I have to be very aligned from a values perspective with an individual. If I don't agree, um, you know, with their values, I find it very hard to build a relationship. Um, and, and I think that's, um, that's the same for, for a lot of people. So I think really understanding and communicating um, your business values, but also as individuals, 
we need to work out what's important to us, what our personal values are, so that we know what we want to match with out in the community. And I, I think many of us as individuals and businesses are going, okay, I kind of know what my values are now, and I'm okay just aligning with the people who I'm values aligned with, and that would be my community or tribe. And I know on a personal level, trying to build even cred, I spend a lot of time trying to convince people of this is what we're trying to do, it's amazing, and um, we're valued, this is our values, here's the impact we're trying to create in the world. And rather than embrace my early adopters and innovators, I spend a lot of time and energy trying to convince the naysayers and the laggards. So you get a little bit more comfortable in your own skin, maybe as you got a bit older, and you go, oh, it's okay, I'm, I've found my community, I will find my community. Like I know even this message will cause so many eye rolls on people who may watch it if they haven't stopped watching already, but it'll resonate with a certain amount of people. And you know, I'm, I'm 45 on the call. I take my hat off to some of these younger kids and students who have a keen sense of who they are at an early age. I definitely didn't have it. I, for the first part of my career, followed a preordained route to what success looked like. It was have a job, go to college, get a job, get married, have the kids, buy the house, have the car, all that kind of stuff. And that was preordained success. And I think people are wanting something different. And if you're in kind of that role, if you're leading people and assuming that people are going to follow that preordained path, I, I would caution, mm. caution leaders and managers. Thank you. So the final thing I'm going to share around our final challenge um, is we are just completed a 30 day challenge at the University of Mississippi. And this was a leadership challenge. So I want to share just very briefly around it. So the context was it was with 16 students in a leadership class around leadership and public policy. And we were engaged to support and complement the work they were doing in their leadership development. And particularly around the area of building capability in the emotional intelligence space of leadership development, with a specific focus on building relationships. And based on my experience of running the three-day challenge with University of New South Wales, I encourage the students to pick one goal and action for 30 days that we're going to focus on for the mental health and well-being. So what I said to them was, you're, you're in college, your leadership career is going to be up and down, peaks and troughs. Rather than think of mental health and well-being as a nice to have, think of it as a foundational element that's going to support you to navigate the times of stress, overwhelm, anxiety, etc. And I would also encourage you to pick a goal and action aligned with the United Nations Global Goals that does in a service of community and social impact. So we worked in February to start this challenge and, and launch the challenge on the 1st of March. So the students chose uh, the most popular choices were listening to understand in a building relationship space, acknowledgement and gratitude in a mental health and well-being space and in the global goals affordable and clean energy and life below water in the community and social impact space so we launched a challenge nicole and 10 days into the challenge the markets all fell we all went down into lockdown and i had a check-in call with my sponsor at the university lecture and he said we've been told students of 48 hours come back to campus get their belongings get off campus, get back to their, their, their parents' homes, et cetera. We're extending spring break by a week. We have been told we're moving online on the 27th of March. Can you support these students while I try to figure out how, how we're gonna transition online? So we could never have designed a leadership challenge like this, uh, Nicole. And it was incredible to be part of and humbling to be part of. So I was lucky that I was able to pivot my business. Mm. I, I started from here online sessions. I was due to be in Oxford, Mississippi on completion day and celebration day at, uh, with these students. Um, and we did have a Slack channel around the students to support them, but the dynamic changed overnight, like for many businesses. So a couple of things that we saw were the students completed their challenge. So 16 students completed 1,121 actions, a bit like the University of New South Wales. 
And here was the action they completed across the, key, the three categories. So of the 16 students, 331 actions completed around build relationships, 457 actions completed around mental health and well-being, and 333 actions, very difficult for an Irish person to say that, by the way, uh, completed against community and social impact. So even though the students were incentivized because their grades were, were marked on their leadership element, when pressure came on and what they needed to support them, they completed more of their mental health and well-being actions. We captured the key learnings from this 30-day challenge with the University of Mississippi. And we did it in combination of interviews, but also a completion event with the students themselves and their lecturer. And the students shared that when everything kind of went pear-shaped in, in the middle of lockdown, having a sense of structure to each day was really supportive for the students. So many of them were transitioning back to living at home with their parents. They hadn't been there for a long time. Uh, they were overwhelmed around what was happening with their coursework, what was happening in terms of their exams, they're going into finals, so little certainty. But to have a tiny bit of certainty in each day with three actions provided them with a sense of, of structure and, and focus to get their, their tasks done and give them a sense of connection for the day. They also shared that having a sense of purpose, so doing things for the global goals, um, actually bonded them together as, as a community, as a group. And they shared in the Slack channel what they were doing, what they were working on. And we had actually thought that the engagement would drop off significantly when this happened, that it would just become another thing that was too hard to do and just another thing on our list to do. But actually the ratings and the engagement increased in the last couple of weeks. And when the students who were used to coming to campus and being in class with each other didn't have that sense of interaction or engagement, working together with other students as part of this challenge actually gave them a sense of focus and purpose. And when we debriefed on the last day, Nicole, around the kind of key learnings around the challenge, what they liked, what they didn't like, any feedback on the challenge experience, the most feedback the students gave was around how important the mental health action was to them. And one of the students shared to say, I got overwhelmed many days where I didn't think I was making any progress. And then I looked at the app and I, I tracked my learning journey over 30 days and I could see what I was actually getting done. And it helped me be a bit more positive and acknowledge what I was doing. So in the, in the midst of that kind of almost chaos or crisis, they had a little bit of a ray of positivity. And they shared that maybe recording great gratitude. Students, one of the actions was around recording three things you were grateful for. Was that a, a lovely emotional reframe, repraisal or reframing tool to help them see the good in what they're experiencing at the time? So I mean, very... we focus on the negative so much in life, don't we? As you, as you started off, you know, it's, it's, we should be highlighting the positive things that, that we do um, and the positive things that we have achieved in, in every day rather than necessarily what we didn't get time to do, you know, what we missed, what the negatives were. So I think it's really important to have that positive mindset and to really look at what we have achieved. And, and as we keep saying, you know, be compassionate, you know, be kind to yourself and, and have a look at what, what the good that you've contributed. And I think that's what's so great about being able to, to track um, your progress and, you know, being from a, a sales environment, it's, it's really important for, for me and a lot of people in that industry to know, um, you know, how, how you're going and, and where you're going and what steps you need to take to get from, you know, where you are now to, to where you want to go and, and to be able to break that down. It's, you know, as you said, I want to have a million dollars in my bank by Wednesday, but I've got no savings today. Okay, we'll break that down. How are you going to get there? Is that achievable? Um, we spend 80% of our waking, um, our waking lives at work as well. So, you know, that sense of community is so, so important. So I can completely um, understand how something like this can, can really bring people together. And particularly at the moment, you know, we're so used to having our, our workplaces, our, um, you know, our, our schools, our universities, everything is set up for us, you know, from that whole experience from, um, you know, not just down to learning, but community 
um, you know, how we, the whole experience that we get. So we have to take control of that and recreate that at home. Um, and, you know, if, if anyone has caught um, Melissa Marsden's um, webinar or, or Deep Dive, you know, she talks a lot about that sense of community as well and how important that is and how we can, you know, use ways to, to recreate that. So um, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, and hopefully that's those elements of those challenges and what we're doing is helpful for your community to, to support them, to support their people, or even to navigate this time on a personal level. Mm. Um, so um, what I've just captured next, Nicole, is a couple of ways for, uh, for people to become involved. As we mentioned, we are gifting a number of um, options and uh, support to our community. And we invite your community to bring their community to be part of it. So as mentioned, we've got a twice daily Cred 15 daily webinar, 8.15 a.m., 5.15 p.m. Sydney. We have people join from all over the world. Um, and it's, it's, it's humbling to be able to support people at this time. So more details at cred.global forward slash Cred 15. Our Cred 30 day challenges. Um, more information at cred.global uh, forward slash cred30. There's two ways to be part of this. Mm -hmm. Join the webinars each week um, or um, do the 30 day challenge using the cred mobile app. And more information is available on that cred.global forward slash cred30 site for people to just use the app themselves and to, small, to start building them small daily habits. And we're honored to be able to gift the app into our community as well. So uh, we're, we're very fortunate, Nicole, that we've received some tremendous support. And I think my, my initial experience of, of this, uh, I guess, lockdown and crisis was my, I was trying to support the people that I work with and the leaders that I coach, et cetera. And I was trying to digest what I was seeing out there in terms of neuroscience and the science of leadership and digest it from my leaders who are very busy and give them actionable insights to work on on a daily or weekly basis. And then I realized that they were too busy to watch 60 minute webinars. So I was trying to distill that even further down. And then in one watching about three o'clock in the morning, one Wednesday night, I think it was the 26th of, of, of March, I, there was an insight around, if you have got experience, tools or products, that you can use for pro-social good at this time, you please do so. And I just had a moment where I felt like I needed to do something. And I, I was racked with imposter syndrome, racked with like a sense of value of what other people would think. And I just reached out to my community. I just got on the phone the next day and started calling and emailing people. And everybody said, I'm in. What can I do to support and how do we support our communities at this time? So Nicole, I'm seeing the absolute best of people at this time. And while it is a very difficult time for people, it is bringing out the best in people as well. And to your point around, mm -hmm. I think we should acknowledge the difficulties, but also celebrate the positives as well. And I'm truly humbled to be part of it and I'm delighted to be able to support your community and, and, and add value and hopefully um, continue to support your community going forward. Great. Thank you so much, Ronan. I, I really appreciate it. And I, as I said earlier, I mean, um, I myself, I, I like to be tracked. I like to be able to break it down into bite-sized chunks. So um, I will definitely be, um, be signing up to the 30-day challenge. I Brilliant. think um, it's something that, that most people, if not everyone, should do. Um, my understanding is that it's not going to take up, um, you know, heaps of your time, um, you know, day by day, but it's, it's something that you can track. Um, it's something that also, um, it brings you that sense of community. Um, you know, you're also adding to the macro, you know, from your micro level as well. And it, and it helps you have that sense of how everything kind of comes together. So, um, you know, for me, I, I think it's a, a fantastic tool. I think it's super beneficial. Um, it's definitely something that I will um, will be recommending, and I, I can't wait to um, to get some more insights. Um, you know, after the early insights, um, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, how it transpires and, and how things progress, 
you know, particularly when we um, when we potentially go back to that work environment or we have a bit of a mix, because the way that I see it is that this this community and this support isn't going to stop as soon as we go back to the office. We're all still going to be going through this transition. There will still be people that may be out of work. There will be still be people who will still have their hours cut. Um, you know, and that's not just on an individual level. That's as a as a household. So we will still have that stress. We will still have that anxiety. There will still be that disruption. So I think we'll be craving that sense of control while we're going through this change, which is ultimately out of our control. What what you're creating at Intact Beyond here is that momentum and that environment to support that and to bring the early adopters, the innovators together who who want to, to, to do and lead with purpose and also to support their community to do good and to support your people in your community to navigate this time together because it's going to be really hard not to be pulled back into the old way. And you're going to get a company that goes, we should really do this. Uh, but then a board might go, no, you can't do this. And it's like intuitively, we all need to support each other. And that's the kind of key thing what I like, really like about what you're doing. So thank you so much for all of your time today, Rain. And I um, as I said, I've, I've certainly learned a lot. Um, I myself will definitely be taking that 30 day challenge. Um, I think at the moment, looking after our mental well-being, but also having some really small um, bite-sized steps to keep us on track and, and make us understand that we are progressing and how we're contributing to that macro, I think is really important. So um, look, thank you. Thank you very much for your expertise um, on behalf of the Intap Beyond team. Thank you. Um, and I just have one more question that I'd like to um, wrap this up with. It's something that I'm asking all of the experts. And it's just really interesting to, um, to hear different opinions of, of how you know, people think that times are going to change. So how do you see the, the workplace and the working community transforming beyond today? So I, I think there's probably, we don't have a full appreciation of how it's, how it's going to change fundamentally. And I think that's okay. And I think working together and supporting each other uh, to understand what the new world looks like is, is probably more important as opposed to having all the answers today. I think many of us are going to be faced with choices um, around the temptation to go back to old ways and maybe the pressure of maybe boards or leadership teams just wanting to get back quickly. So I think leaders who may intuitively know or have seen enough now to want to change are going to be challenged. So I think the first part is that how do we support each other as, as leaders who are trying to create that new world to stay the course? I, I think that's that's the, the first part. I, I can't see people going back to the commute. I think that's one thing that's not going to shift back. I think it's going to change the way companies have office space. I think it's going to be a fundamental change in that. I can't see anybody paying the full commercial levels that they were in the past um, based on people's needs and, and wants going forward. I think on an individual basis, people are want to, going to want to keep the absolute best of what they're enjoying. So whether that's more time with their family, um, being outcome focused, still being able to deliver, um, and also to support their personal health and well-being as non-negotiables. Like they're they're not nice to have now. I think people are seeing the time with family, the time of looking after self, are non-negotiables. So I think they're the big fundamental things that are going to happen. Um, and I'm excited at what lies ahead, Nicole. Great. I mean, look, I, um, I must admit, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I think there'll be, um, I do think there'll be a bit of a mix. Um, I'm really excited to see what this means, but particularly when we first, um, you know, were forced into work from home and 
we thought about Intact Beyond and you know what we were trying to achieve and we we sat there and we spoke about a lot of what ifs and I think you know one of the things that, that came to mind was what if we didn't have to sit on the train for an hour every day to get to work? What if we could use that commute time, you know, to, to work from home and shorten that time and, and maybe go in at 10 rather than eight? You know, why, why are we sticking to these exact rules that say you have to be here at this time, you have to leave at this time and you have to be sat at this desk? Um, I, I think it, it's really interesting. And I think the other thing that, has changed since we started these conversations was when we first started it was it will be at the end of we work it will be the end of um you know of shared office space however as this progresses initially it was based on fear it was based on we don't know who else has been in that building so we don't know from a risk perspective what that means but now that's settled um you know and, and people are starting to look forward a little bit it's more about okay well can that benefit me? If those risks were managed and we can mitigate that, what benefit? So it's being looked at in a much more positive light. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to put, ask you the question and put you on the spot about no. what you think about that shared working environment and, and co-working facilities, but I would love to hear your thoughts. So I am going to put you on the spot. What do you think, Ronan? Do you think it's the end or do you think it's, um, it's the future? You know, I, I hadn't given it much consideration. Um, that's you give me something to think about. I had had not even been on my radar. Um, so just working through that thinking, I think I've enjoyed the the benefits of co working spaces in, in the past. I've and kind of enjoyed that sense of community. I think there's been some challenges around like pricing and affordability for a lot of a lot of companies. Um, but I I think we we've, we've proven that you can. You can work from home and work a couple of days in, in the office each week um, or as you say go in later off peak and, and and leave later and and integrate your day i saw a great thing on linkedin a couple of weeks ago where someone said you know what's what's led digital transformation is it your cto is it your coo and i said no covid id 19 has <laughs> led digital transformation in a businesses. So I think there's going to be a lot of like strategies uh, gone out the window and changed. Definitely. I mean, you know, my strategy from a personal perspective, you know, my holiday plans have gone completely out the window for the rest of this year. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I think that's that's one of the key things is this is a forced change. We have not had control over this and we're still surviving and we're pivoting. And you know, you mentioned it earlier, these types of times that they, they bring out the best in people, they, they bring out the best or they bring out the worst. And I think it's one of those sink or swim situations. So um, I encourage everybody, you know, to really reflect in this time, put a plan in place, you know, work out how you can pivot, how you can benefit from this time. Um, and of course, please reach out to myself or any of our experts if we can assist any further. Thanks, Nicole.